Today we will talk about an enigmatic figure whose transcendental vision unveiled the veils of time. The prophet Isaiah, the sage who saw the future on the wings of the cherubim. Imagine yourself at a time when the fate of nations was a mystery, only to be revealed by those chosen by the divine. Isaiah was not only an observer of his time, but a visionary who, through his prophecies, traced the course of history far beyond his own existence. But what makes Isaiah so unique among the prophets, and how do his visions still resonate in hearts and minds millennia later? Immerse yourself with us on this epic journey through heavenly visions, divine messages, and a legacy that shaped the course of faith and spirituality. About 750 years before the Common Era, an emblematic figure emerged marked by his deep wisdom and broad vision, the prophet Isaiah. He was not limited to being an earthly presence, but rather a voice that resonated throughout history, intertwining his words with human destiny. Isaiah, responsible for the longest book among the prophetic texts of the Bible, established himself as the chief messianic prophet of the Old Testament. His existence anticipated the arrival of Jesus Christ, and his revelations mirrored the majestic glory of the divine. His name, which means God is salvation, echoes the purpose of his heavenly mission. Although Isaiah is widely revered, many details of his life remain an enigma for many. Son of Amos, and from royal lineage, he was married to a woman referred to in the Bible as the prophetess, as mentioned in Isaiah chapter 8 verse 3, a title that hints at his own connection to prophecy. Isaiah's journey as a prophet began in the year of King Uzziah's death, which had been stricken with leprosy. His prophetic service extended throughout the governments of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, leaders of the kingdom of Judah, spanning a period of about 64 years. The starting point of this spiritual mission was a transcendental experience in which Isaiah witnessed divine magnificence. In his narrative he relates, I saw the Lord sitting on a high and majestic throne, and the brim of his garment filled the temple, as mentioned in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1. Around the throne seraphim sang in harmony, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is filled with his glory, according to Isaiah chapter 6 verse 3. This vision which made the foundations of the temple tremble marked the prelude to the significant task that Isaiah was about to undertake. At this moment of divine encounter, while the seraphim praised God, a dense and holy cloud filled the temple, leading Isaiah to a deep reflection on his human and sinful condition. Taken by fearful respect, he admitted his own fallibility before the divine purity, exclaiming, Woe to me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, living among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 5. At this moment of contrition, a seraph approached with a living ember, taken from the sacred altar and touching the lips of Isaiah, announced, Behold, it touched his lips, his guilt was removed, and his sin forgiven, in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 7. This act of purification not only redeemed Isaiah, but also prepared him to embark on his divine mission. After being cleansed, Isaiah was confronted with the divine inquiry. Who shall I send? Who shall go for us? As mentioned in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. Motivated by unshakable faith and a spirit of obedience, Isaiah did not hesitate to offer himself, saying, Here I am, send me to me. This statement reflects the disposition of a divinely selected man, committed to leading a distinct existence away from sin and the corrupting influences of the world. This narrative underlines an essential truth. Purity of heart and holiness are prerequisites for those charged with spreading the divine message. However, rare are those who choose to refine their thoughts, words, and actions. Faced with the magnificence of the Lord, Isaiah found himself confronted with his own vulnerability and the failing condition of humanity. To fulfill his prophetic role, it was necessary for him to abandon practices incompatible with his vocation. Isaiah understood that he could not lead the people of Israel if he would condone their mistakes. This abdication was crucial for him to fully accept his divine calling, admitting his limitations and acquiring spiritual authority to address a nation that had turned to idolatry. During his ministry, Isaiah witnessed the rise of the Assyrian Empire 
and the decay of the northern kingdom of Israel. His voice not only condemned, but also brought messages of hope and renewal in troubled times. When the kingdom of Judah faced severe crises, Isaiah emerged as a voice of alertness, urging the nation and its leaders to remain loyal to God. He shone as a beacon of hope in a period marked by the expansion of idolatry and paganism in Judah and Jerusalem. Isaiah relentlessly spread the divine message, advocating for compassion, justice, and the redemption promised by the Lord at a time when ethics and moral values were in sharp decline. And speaking of seeking guidance, strength, and fellowship in our journeys of faith, I want to highlight something special for you. In the first comment set out below, you will find a valuable resource for those who wish to deepen their spiritual connection and find direction amid the adversities of life. I'm talking about an exclusive ebook that offers 52 weeks of deep reflection, daily practice and prayer, all inspired by the rich stories and biblical teachings that have the power to transform lives. Isaiah was notable for conveying a message full of hope and renewal. He proclaimed in his scriptures, Mankind is like the withering grass and its falling flowers, but the word of the Lord abides forever. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 8. These words served as an echo of the perpetuity and constancy of the divine word. Intriguingly, the book of Isaiah is seen by many scholars as a miniature reflection of the entire Bible, which is composed of 66 books corresponding to the 66 chapters of the book of Isaiah. The 39 books of the Old Testament find a mirror in the first 39 chapters of Isaiah, illustrating the dynamics between God and Israel. The coincidences extend to the New Testament, where the Gospels detail the ministry of the Messiah, analogous to the chapters from 40 in Isaiah, which introduce the figure of the suffering servant, anticipating the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Looking at the Revelation, which reveals visions of the New Jerusalem, we find a striking consonance with the last two chapters of Isaiah, which describe new heavens and a new earth. Isaiah chapter 53, often cited as the chapter of the suffering servant, stands out for its moving messianic prophecy. Who believed our preaching? To whom was the arm of the Lord revealed? He grew before him as a bud and as a root in barren land. He had neither beauty nor beauty for us to look at him, and had no appearance that pleased us. Isaiah chapter 53 verses 1 to 2. Isaiah portrays the suffering servant with words that evoke deep emotion, highlighting the absence of beauty or majesty to attract our gaze, marked by human rejection and contempt. Isaiah presents the Messiah as a man of sorrows, experienced in suffering, someone before whom people hide their faces, despised, without giving him value. Isaiah chapter 53 verses 2 to 3. This prophecy accurately draws the figure of the Messiah, anticipating the rejection and adversity he would face he assumed our infirmities and bore our sorrows. It was we who considered him afflicted, struck by God, and humiliated. But he was wounded by our transgressions, crushed by our iniquities. The punishment that brings us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Isaiah chapter 53 verses 4 to 5. These words spoken by Isaiah echo throughout history, announcing the salvation that would come from the sacrifice of Christ. Isaiah continues, we have all gone astray like sheep, each one following his way, and the Lord has brought upon him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6. The prophet addresses the comprehensive nature of human sin and the extraordinary redemption offered by God through the suffering servant. He was oppressed and tortured, but did not open his mouth. Like a lamb brought to slaughter and like a mute sheep before his shearers, he did not open his mouth. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 7. Isaiah foretold the suffering of the Messiah and his silent resignation in the face of adversity and injustice, a powerful emblem of sacrifice and redemption. Therefore I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, for he has shed his life unto death and has been reckoned with the transgressors. He has taken the sin of many and interceded for the transgressors. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 12. This verse ends the prophecy highlighting the greatness of the divine reward for the sacrifice of the Messiah, who, despite being associated with transgressors, offered his life for the redemption and intercession of humanity. The outcome of chapter 53 in Isaiah 
brings a promise of victory and salvation, reflecting deeply on the purpose and influence of the Messiah. When contemplating these chapters, it is evident that the prophecies of Isaiah foreshadowed the coming of Jesus Christ, the expected Messiah, about 750 years after Isaiah. Isaiah's visions transcended his own era, offering a light that persists to the present day. He predicted that the Messiah would bring justice to the nations, renew the sacred covenant, and become an illumination for non-Jewish peoples. Isaiah anticipated the suffering and death of the Messiah as a sacrifice for the sins of mankind, as well as his resurrection. However, Israel failed to recognize and accept Jesus Christ as the Messiah. The traditional Jewish interpretation of the time did not associate the figure of the suffering servant in Isaiah 53 with the Messiah. The notion that Jesus sacrificed his life on the cross for the redemption of sinners was considered by many to be contrary to righteousness, based on the belief that no innocent should suffer for the guilty. Yet divine designs often transcend human understanding, challenging our rational and intellectual perceptions. The Bible does not narrate in detail the end of the life of the prophet Isaiah. His last public appearance is recorded during the events related to Sennacherib, when an angel of the Lord protects Israel against the Assyrians. According to ancient traditions, dating from the first century after Christ, Isaiah would have been martyred, sawn in half as punishment for denouncing the iniquities of King Manasseh. The Talmud mentions that Isaiah was pursued by Manasseh and took refuge inside a cedar trunk. So Isaiah's attempt to hide was fruitless when the edges of his clothing denounced him, leading the king to order the cedar to be sawn and causing the prophet's death. Isaiah's trajectory, marked by both enigmatic and tragic, mirrors the path of a true prophet. He remained resilient in the face of adversity and challenge, illustrating that his story transcends suffering and is also a celebration of the loyalty and bravery inherent in divine messengers. Isaiah, through his life and legacy, evidences the transforming power of the divine word. He did not merely foresee the future, but proclaimed immutable truths about divinity, human nature, and the promise of salvation. His voice endures, prompting us to ponder the essence of our own spiritual walk. Like Isaiah, we are urged to face our frailties and to strive for a closer bond with the Creator. His example motivates us to be carriers of truth, justice and hope in a context often permeated by challenges and uncertainties. If you feel inspired by the story of Isaiah and wish to continue your journey through the biblical narratives, you cannot miss the video I am recommending below. In it, we delve into the extraordinary story of the prophet Elijah, a man of unshakable faith who was caught up in heaven in a chariot of fire. This story, full of miracles and powerful demonstrations of the divine presence, promises to further enrich your understanding and appreciation of the mysteries contained in the sacred scriptures. I'll see you in a few seconds.